I've just dropped my trowel downstairs. Today we're going to talk about patch rendering and discuss whether it's as horrific as it seems and also the cost of getting it wrong. First off though, let's talk about materials we're going to use in today's episode. Now the great thing about using this render which is OCR by Weber is the fact that you can layer two coats in one sitting. So basically I'm applying this first coat here, very thick mind you, and using this pre-grip which is the uh, Seeker render grip, it's brilliant stuff, it just sticks to it like no problem. But the thing is you can apply two layers ten minutes after each other. So I applied the first coat, scratched it, once it was flattened and uh, ruled off, and you can immediately apply your second coat. And I'll show you a technique later on in this video on how to get the coats drying faster, even during winter. But the fact you can layer it so fast, it just makes such a difference, especially if you're just patching small areas at a time. And to be honest, I'd never go back to standard sand cement after using this bag render. It's just brilliant to use. Um, and it just dries so fast, and it's just so easy to use. It's just really sticky. But the other way, and the way I'm going to be doing in this video, is to layer it into two sections. Now, there was just too much patching. We're literally talking about four stories of a building here, which again we're going to talk into in a bit, into why we're patching rather than just taking it back. But it's literally four stories of patching, and it's grueling to do it all. So I've literally just treated it like it was just standard, typical scratch coat. And again, a lot of questions with OCR. You can do it in two layers over a series of days. Just treat it like you would standard sand cement. Um, so yeah, basically just treating a scratch coat and then coming back to do sections as we go. Question is, is it worth the hassle? Now the big question we want to be asking ourselves is, is it really worth patching it on a big scale like this? Would it be worth just hacking it all back and starting again? Well, let's find out one of the big problems now with patching. Now, for this to work, you have to make sure there's nothing that's drummy. Now this. You hear it? This is solid. That's drummy. That whole patch needs to come off. Now, how many more patches like that run the building as well? That needs to be hacked off. So like anything, there's always a problem. The problem with patching in these small sections like that is how much of the building is going to be left where actually the cement, sand cement, how much of it is going to be still stable? I mean, if part of it's blowing, does that mean the rest of the building's going to go again within a matter of years? Maybe, but the big problem is how much is it going to cost if you didn't patch it? And um, can anyone afford it during these weird times where everything costs so much money? If you get a chance, just fit beads where you can, because it's going to make it so much easier. Free-handing around reveals and trying to get reveals right when you've got existing. Just hack it all back, fix a bead on a corner, it's so much easier. It's a cold start this morning, so what we've got to do is protect the render. Now, it's not going to be too bad in the day, but later on it's going to drop to colder temperatures. So, we're going to be using some winter mix, some frost proofer. This will accelerate the render and also protect it from frost. So this is the Bostick one. I'm not too particular on brands, but generally it's just good to protect your render this time of year, especially when you notice colder temperatures come in. And we're working all the way up here. Drop my trowel downstairs. Let's take a look. I oh, know it's bent. 
So I'll drop the trowel, let's see if it works. See how bad it is. Now, if you do decide to patch, then in my opinion, if you have a tiny section of ice and you're leaving little bits behind, it's actually easier just to hack the wall off because patching in in itself is, is quite a skill to it because you've got to fine it down and I'm going to explain this in detail in a minute but basically if you have got a little area like this in my opinion just start again but if you have a big area then this is how you do it you apply the render again I've just wetted the scratch coat up and then you rule it close and tight to your existing and that way you're going to have a nice degree of thickness but make sure you rule it tight because you don't want a big overlap between your render and the existing patch and then standard I'm using the Rafina diamond float here brilliant bit of kit by the way if you've not got one of these this just below the typical floats out of the water they're really good so when you float in, float into the existing as you can see here I'm floating into it and making sure that there's nothing left behind so what you want is real tight flow into it and you will have to flow in ex where you've ruled off it will leave a bit of a gap so just make sure that when you are doing it you're floating into the existing bit of render there and then you've got a nice little bridge between the existing and where you're working to so then just a nice tight flow again depending on how well you ruled it should make it easier but then this is what I recommend this is the Rafina sponge float and they are wicked for patching it because they just effortlessly glides from one area to the other. Look, there's literally no difference between where you've gone and into the existing wall. Um, it just does a real good job and I don't know why I didn't use this earlier because they just last forever these sponge floats. <laughs> I kept using like the jumbo car sponges, they last about two minutes. These do a real good job. That, patching in from one area to the other and just generally great tools to use when you're rendering so if you haven't got one of these yet this is a Rafina Hydro sponge get them they're bloody brilliant So that's it, in my humble opinion, I think it's always best to hack off and start again and do a proper job. But if you haven't got that option, then here's a full guide on how to patch render. But again, it's probably easy just to start again. If you are willing to hack off your wall and render a wall from scratch, then check out this video here. I'll show you the full guide on how to use OCR render, which is in my opinion the best bag render on the market at the moment. And then click that to find out how to do a proper job in terms of rendering and subscribe here. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.